Welcome in everyone. Today, today is December 10th, 2023, and we are going over some flowing charts here for the week of December 11th to the 15th. So let's get started here. We have um, a little bigger list today, so we're going to do BA, DKNG, PLTR, LTHM, Unity. So that's Boeing, DraftKings, Palantir, Lithium, and Unity. So let's get started here. And again, for anybody new, I do have another video on how I actually pull um, flow alerts and what I look for. So kind of going to touch on some of that here as well. But there's a deeper video on that. So I did already pull, obviously, the um, tickers. So let's get started here with Boeing. So Boeing here, we had um, two repeated hits here on the weekly 12, 15, 20, 23, 245, and 252 and a half calls. So kind of looking at them here, let's take a peek. So clicking in here, this whale, so this is one thing that I would say isn't 100% clear flow, but this is that whale entry here and Looks like maybe the whale took some size off here. Won't know until obviously see how much of that volume carries over into open interest. So that's um, that first alert on that 245 call. And kind of just looking at that overall um, options volume and stuff. Looking more bullish and you can always come down here to that historical data and kind of see how the stock performed when that bear bull volume and all that is there as well. So that's looking kind of bullish there. So typically I wouldn't keep that on, but looking at what time this other repeated hit came in 10 minutes before close, here we are right here. So this is that big whale there, and obviously see how much of that volume turns into open interest on Monday morning, but you can see that whale entry there. Obviously they didn't size out there in 10 minutes, but... We'll see how much carries over. So that's the flow on BA. Now looking at the chart. And again, I do like unusual whales for the charts, but I am I look at the earnings as well too. That's the one thing they don't have on there. But we are um we've had a big run up on Boeing here lately. I mean, this is a V-shaped recovery. You got that 50 day crossing the 200 day. The one downside is we're coming into this um supply zone here. So I got a supply zone here of about 248.04 to 258.28. You can see previously had trouble getting over this little area there and a little back here, but this bot obviously turned into demand there, support, whatever you want to call it, and shot up there. But the last two and maybe a little three times there had um, trouble getting over that. So, and then kind of looking at their earnings here. We missed earnings by about 2.5% beat on revenue. So keep that in mind. And another thing here with the chart. So you do have that V-shaped recovery. So, I mean, this obviously is a huge spot here. And it looks like we did kind of break above that top of the V there. So that is a good sign. And you come and look at the volume here as well, above average buying volume there. The other thing I don't like though is that RSI is kind of getting a little hot. Again, RSI doesn't mean anything. If it doesn't 100% mean something's going to drop, something can stay overbought or oversold for a long time, so keep that in mind. So kind of looking at the contract here and how I'm getting the entry. So again, these were weeklies, so let me... Pull that back up just so everybody can see. So again, five days. There's theta decay over this, so Will's probably a little more aggressive. So I um I try to find the best entries. I want to secure as much profit as possible. So I am um, kind of looking at this 240.35 level here. So this is on the one minute chart, obviously. Let me bump out to the one hour here. Actually, I'll do 30 first. So, I mean, obviously, you can see that's a good supported spot there. And yeah, I'll go one hour. That's going to take a while otherwise. 
So again, I mean, this is a very good support area. And coming out, and I'll do four hours. It's going to be a long video otherwise. Um, so good support there. Good support there. Support along in there. Support, obviously, you can see we're going up there and good support there. So that's kind of what I'm seeing there for, since it's an aggressive entry too, obviously the whale's looking at a weekly expiration. So I'd kind of like that 240.35 spot there. And looking at the contracts as well, we, um, a little lighter on open interest. I want to see kind of what these open at. Um, let's take a peek here. So like that 247, let's see. I mean, it had good volume on Friday. Obviously, we don't know how much is going to carry over, but we'll take a seat in the morning there. So I kind of would like that 240.35 entry and I'm not going to call out a specific contract here just because it's a little lower. I do kind of like kind of like that 250. I mean, there's good open interest on there, but see where we're at. And keep in mind, I would probably keep this as a day trade idea just because looking at the contracts, that delta to theta, that theta decrease is huge. You're losing that much value on your contract per day. So if you got, let's just look at this 252 and a half. You're losing 20% of value on this contract per day. So keep that in mind. So that is bow in there. So again, just kind of show that entry. I mean, good little spot. I could look for a scalp there, obviously, depending on your aggression level. You can always move that up, depending on where we gap up as well. Gap up, gap down, whatever. So moving on to DraftKings here. So DraftKings, we had a repeated hit on the 12, 15, 36 and a half puts. So looking at this, you can see the clear entry on the flow. Ask side volume here, not a lot of bid side. So this will be an easier one to see kind of how much of that volume turns into open interest as well. Kind of looking at that overall flow too, I would say it tends to lean more bullish here. But again, that doesn't always 100% mean it's going to go up or down. But kind of looking at the overall here, I mean, the last couple weeks or so, I mean, hasn't been the best for DraftKings, obviously. So let's pull up the chart here. So kind of how I drew this one out, and this is on the day chart. I kind of just drew this up as a little channel here, obviously. Could admit, could have probably came up a little bit more there, but not a huge deal. But we're kind of sitting in the middle of this channel. Obviously, we, obviously we um, rejected the top of that channel there. A little increase in volume there as well, too. So, and we also had news on DraftKings as well. So they're facing a class action suit. So, I mean, that's negative for a company, obviously. So keep that in mind and looking at the earnings. So they did have pretty good earnings. I mean, beat earnings, beat revenue. And so the whale, what were we, five days out. So again, shorter term on those. I would, I already got it marked out here. I would kind of look for that 37.59 spot for maybe a quick scalp down. Just looking at this area. Again, this is the day chart. You can see we rejected good at that area last time. Rejections there. Rejections there. So, I mean, good spot for maybe a possible scalp down with the flow there as well, kind of tipping that off. So I would kind of look, let's look at the contract now. So DraftKings and... So that 37.53 there, obviously got a little ways to go up, but don't need to just chase. So, and this is a slower mover. So again, being as close to the money is the idea because you want that high again, delta versus that theta and theta is not too aggressive on this. So, I mean, about six cents a day, but when you get to that, those lower valued contracts, that is not 
you don't want that Thader because you're going to start taking big hits on the contracts. But with the weeklies, when I see the weekly flow, I do kind of like treating those more as day trades just with the Theta and all that. But I kind of, so we had 37.50 for an entry. So I'd like, let's see. So not a lot of volume on that on, that on Friday. What about the 36.5s? So 36.5s had good volume. See how much of that turns into open interest. And obviously, is if we gapped up, people are probably going to have interest in those closer to the money strikes because you, again, want that higher delta. And you can always just check that there. So that see where they're at. I'm not 100% going to call something out here. Don't want to pump any of these. So keep that there. So let's move on to Palantir now. So pull that up and then pull up the flow here. So Palantir. So we got two repeated hits on that 112. 24 expiration on the 17 and 18 call. Let's take a peek at these. So the 17, again, very easy flow to see here. You can see it's pretty much all ask side, not a lot of bid side. See how much of that volume will carry over there. Kind of looking at that overall flow. And again, you can always edit these to just kind of see what your average volume is on those kind of your net premiums just if you like look like, digging into the data this is a really good area to take a peek at you can see what the stock was doing that day so go back to the options volume and again obviously you can switch this up how you want so let me move this back to the five minute so again you can see that call volume outweighs that put volume and you can always click on these candles too which is really nice as well. So we'll click on that one and you can kind of see a lot of this is ask side volume here as well. So and obviously edit this how you'd like. My internet's a little slow right now. So but you can see I mean this is mostly ask side and here's that flow alert in there as well. So you can kind of see that which is nice. Nice little feature they have in there. So that was a 17 call and again this is for the whole thing so you this isn't going to change at all so you can see that 210 was still there in that 85 so again you just hold over that too as well and you can see a big the big difference there so here's the contract for that 18 though so again another clear entry on the flow there can't really see a big whale exiting right there so again ask side volume bid side there you look at that volume and that open interest there so see how much of that carries over and I always can come back here, kind of see how that, what that bear bull flow did and all that stuff that day. So, I mean, a little mixed here, I mean, with how it was performing the last week or two. So now let's look at the chart for Palantir. So I do like this chart set up a lot. So we are looking at hmm, Kind of, and obviously you can kind of switch it on your time frames how you want as well. So start with the weekly view here. I mean, you can see we're in a clear uptrend here. That 50 days starting to move up. And I mean, this is a huge move down in a week. Let me, I mean, just in this week from the whole thing. I mean, that's a 14% move down. Market mechanics, you're probably going to see shorts cover it. A little bit I would assume but again not 100% given but that clear uptrend there let's move it back to the day chart reset that there and again I mean you can kind of see that 200 coming up as well too which is a good sign but you can see the last three days good bounce there good bounce there good bounce there obviously we bounce there bounce there so, I mean, I kind of like that chart setup. We're not super overbought or oversold either right now. So, I mean, that is, again, something to kind of keep in mind. But we are having problems with this 50-day moving average. So, looking like there's probably good resistance here around that 1797 level. Kind of want to see it break that. And how do we do for earnings? I know they beat earnings, so 
23% they beat them by, and about half a percent on revenue, so decent earnings, decent fundamentals there, obviously, and you can always come in here as well for trade and view and kind of look at their financials as well. So one thing, if you want to dig into that, I mean, come in here, look at your income statements, you can see they're having decent earnings as well. Look at their annual, obviously they're doing pretty good and you can always pull up their info on the website. I'm not going to dive super deep, deep into that. Just kind of show everybody trading view there. So that is, um, the Palantir chart and this whale was what were they 33 days out so a little mid longer term here so let's look at the contracts so Palantir and I like and again this is a slower mover too so I'd kind of like to see it come back to that opening on Friday so let's take a peek here so starting with the hour I mean yep Good support here, good support here, good support in here, good support there, supported there, bounced, bounced. So that is good in four hour chart. I mean, still looking pretty good there for a little scalp up possibly. And if you wanted a safer entry, you could always come down to that 1623 but again that is a pretty big move on something that's already made a 14 percent move down in a week almost so the 1723 there and let's look at the chain so they were 33 days out so 33 don't like that open interest let's move on so 40 so this is great open interest here so if we got down to that, let's say, what did I say, 17.23? So 17.23, I would probably look at that 17 put. Again, slower mover, you want that high delta. So 65 cents on this contract per dollar move. So obviously you get a dollar move, you get a good chunk of your money there. So and then theta is really low on that as well which is something that's nice. So that is kind of Palantir there. And let's move on to, next we have Lithium, or Liven, whatever. Sorry, I don't know why I said lith Lithium. I think they mine Lithium, actually. Yep, okay. I was like, what am I talking about? Okay, so anyways, so here's your Lithium. Or, <laughs> I'm going to keep saying it, live and live in, whatever you want to call it. So looking here, obviously we're breaking out of that little downtrend. Good volume there. And let's actually go back to the flow here. So that is LTHM. So starting with the flow here, obviously. Repeated hits on that 119.17 and a half call. So this one's really interesting to me because you have the repeated hits with an ascending fill. And for those that don't know, that just means your fill is pretty much going up. So this one has a little wider spread. So you can see they were getting 60, 60, 60. And kind of that bid ask is kind of going up there as well. And this is um, a low, lower historically volumed um, traded one as well. So look at that volume there. You can see that volume. I mean, there's 10,000 on the day and there's was only a thousand on the contract. So let's dig in here and all three of those should show in here as well. So, yep, here's your clean flow as well. So those are those two earlier flow alerts. And then here is the other one. So again, clean flow here again, looking at that ask of 10,000 bit of only 474 so again can just kind of go back here and see this is not a heavily traded stock as well so again see how much of that volume turns into open interest they can't exercise since this is 1552 this is almost two dollars out of money so and looking at the overall calls puts etc look at the difference of this calls puts this is very clear flow, I would say, and you can always come down here. 
see how we've been performing. Obviously, it looks like it's been performing good. So keep that in mind. You can kind of come back here, see what the bearable flow, volume, spread, or whatever you want to call it, did on that day. So huge day on Friday, obviously. So now we'll go look at the chart. So again, those were the three alerts. One, so 933, 936. 1438 so and again i'm central time so um the chart here so looking at that chart one more time good volume pretty i'd say in the middle there and we're testing that 50-day moving average this is a pretty good um resistance support spot here as well so i mean before obviously you could see we popped here a little bit and then the last time we failed that, and we're testing it again, so we'll see how that goes. And yeah, that, that volume pickup is really interesting to me there. So let's, and I know there's a gap on this one as well. So it's a four hour chart. So looking here, here's our gap. So with the whale being about 40 days out on these, I, again, a little longer term, I kind of want to see that gap fill. So I would almost look for that entry about 1452-ish there. So right at that gap fill, 1452 to 1479. This is a slower mover. Obviously, you want to capture as much movement as possible. So let's let's look at the contract there, or the contracts there. So that was the chart. So live end, not lithium this time. So looking at that 40 day, good open interest here. I like this. A thou anything below a thousand, I'm kind of sticking out of. The one thing I want to watch with this one is these spreads. That bid and ask is a little wider. Don't just hit the ask because you do not want to start a position being down. That is the worst thing you can do is just, hey, I want to get into this trade idea. I'm going to hit the ask. So one thing I would not do, and I kind of, so if we got down to, so that 1452, I would, I'd look at that 15 for um, 119, decent open interest, probably see some more volume on that as well. So keep that there, and then again, watch the spreads on that. So now touching on the last one, so we have unity, and get over to the flow here for that. So Unity here, we've got repeated hits on that 119.35 call. Decent or good premium. Let's look at here. So, so it looks like this is our whale right here. So nine, let's see what time it came in. So 918. So what do we got here? Yep. So 9 fit, you can see 915, 920. So anything that came in here. So that's your whale. And little bid side stuff. Oops, get off there. So little bid side stuff there. No side there. And obviously you can just click there and it's going to tell you. Or mid fill there. So kind of want to see how much of that volume again carries over into open interest. And kind of looking at that overall again. Call side volume versus put side volume. Leaning call side there. And coming down here obviously you can see it's been performing pretty well here a couple down days here and there so keep that in mind so that's the flow there for the unity and another thing that i kind of like to do too as well as well as kind of if you click on that ticker it's going to pull up all the data for that specific stock and if you want to look at different top volume chains the highest open interest chains you can get some latest news on it and you have insider data buy sells etc and your analyst stuff down here so just some stuff that you can look at as well for those that like digging into data it's one nice thing about unusual whales there as well kind of keep everything together very easy and accessible to find so back to here we saw that entry on the whale now let's take a peek at that chart so unity so Unity is an interesting one here. So this is a longer whale. So I kind of like looking at that week chart first. Whoops, I copy the price. 
So you can obviously see we were in that little downtrend, breaking out of that with good volume there as well. So we had a good volume there on that little uptrend, and I believe that was on the day chart where I found that. So, yep, you can see that was our little uptrend there. And we broke out of that on the earnings, on good earnings report. There's your downtrend. We broke out of that. Good volume there as well. Seeing on that little decrease there, a little lighter volume. Saw a higher volume there. Kind of seeing a little light, lighter volume there again on that little sell-off. And then huge volume day there. And looking at the four-hour chart here as well, you can kind of see we got a bull flag here. So there's your little flag post, kind of a little flag in there and kind of broke out of that again. Good volume there, obviously. And again, you can continue to dig down and look at the volume. Helps with price action and all that. So, But we're sitting above that 200-day on that four-hour, but I want to come back to the day chart. So again, we're below the 200. And with that whale being out a little further, I kind of, let's pull up this. So it's looking at the 119s. So, okay, this has good open interest here. A lot of these were 119, it looks like. So it looks like these whales are expecting that Santa rally to continue on. So if we got a pullback, I... 40 days out, I want a better entry. So, so again, good support here, obviously. And this would bring us, let me pull up the trading view chart again. I'd like an entry almost like at a test, at the test of this little breakout. So you get a test of that breakout on that bull flag there. So kind of, we got 3173-ish maybe, 3175. I'd like 3173 here, I guess. Let's go take a peek back here. So we got there, 32.96. So I said 3173. Let me pop a line in here. Close enough, 3174. So okay, got some little hammer candles there. Good support, it looks like. And this is, again, day chart as well. Pop this up. So again, bounce, 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 bounce. Big bounce there. Wanted to bounce, obviously didn't touch it. So I kind of like that spot, the 3173 spot. And that would get you that test again. on that breakout of the bull flag. And so with these whales being, or well, let's look at the earnings here. I know they had pretty good earnings, I believe. So yep, they beat earnings by 88%. We um, missed revenue slightly. So that 119 chain, so let's go back to that chain. So again, this is a slower mover as well. And I was looking at that 71 or 3173, 71. So 3173, again, the slower mover, I would probably target that 32, 33 call. I don't think theta is that bad on there. No, theta is not bad on those. Good delta again. So, and you got that good open interest of 7,000 right there, and spreads are really friendly on this one. So that's kind of what I have for this week. Obviously, if you've seen, like, let's just, since we're on Unity, if Unity gapped up 3% Monday, obviously that flow kind of made its move. Kind of try to use a little comment. I would say these are good for, like, a week setup, just a nice little weekly setup. And just kind of a little common sense. If something gaps up and we had call ideas on something and we gap up 6%, that idea made its move. That's kind of how I look at it. So a little common sense there. 
And you can always tweet me, ask me in Discord, whatever. Like, hey, this moved up so much. Is it still good? Don't be afraid to ask. And kind of looking at the week ahead, too, because this is a big week coming up, actually. So, consumer inflation expectations Monday, CPI Tuesday, Wednesday PPI and FOMC. Thursday, we have retail sales. And Friday, kind of some manufacturing and S&P PMI data. So keep that in mind as well with opening any swing trades. A lot is coming on this week. I would probably lean more day trade ideas. But otherwise, that is kind of all I got for this week for everybody. Last week, we had a great week with um, UPS and we, we had three, and I don't remember them off the top of my head. But we had three great trade ideas last week that phenomenal. So that is all I have right now. I look forward to talking to everybody soon. Have a good weekend and day, everyone.